to the last chapter that we're going to look at in farm is um, oral conditions and their treatment. When we look inside our client's mouth, we really need to do a diligent job doing a good extra oral and intra oral exam. And when I say intra oral, we look everywhere. We look um, on the lateral border of tongue. We look underneath the tongue, um, like over here. We want to look everywhere because we may find a condition or we may find a lesion and um, th those lesions could potentially be cancerous. So when this happens and we see a lesion, we're not going to alarm the client and tell them, oh, I think we have cancer because I see something over here. No, no, no. What we're going to do is we're going to get the dentist to look at it and um, you know, maybe get them referred to an oral pathologist or um, we could get them to go see their doctor. So uh, we don't want to alarm our clients when we see lesions. What we want to do is we want to get a dentist over to have a look at the lesion. And we also may want to <clears throat> refer them to an oral pathologist or um, a doctor. <clears throat> so there are many conditions that we'll look at in these slides. They're listed over here and we'll go by, we'll go look at them one by one. So the first one that we're going to look at is um, acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis also known as ANUG. This is um, a very painful infection. It looks like this in the gum and so when you think of acute, acute means pain so think of pain. Necrotizing that means like flesh eating like it's eating away at the gums as we kind of see here. Ulcerative so it's kind of ulcered out and gingivitis it's inflamed. It's also known as trench mouth. The reason why it got the name trench mouth was because this used to happen in World War I. They noticed that all the young soldiers would come back with severe pain in their mouth. And um, the reason why is because if you are undergoing a lot of stress and a lot of trauma, this can happen in your mouth. So they call it trench mouth because in World War I, they built a lot of trenches where they would hide out. Um, so that's why we, it got the name trench mouth. It's also known as Vincent infection because Dr. Vincent, that's the name of the guy that came up with um, this, they, that realized that this is happening. So it's very painful. You have bleeding gums. Um, and the first thing that actually gets affected is the interdental or the middle or the in-between papilla. Okay, that's the first thing that gets affected, the interdental papilla. And then the gingival margin gets affected. First thing that gets affected is the interdental papilla. So how do you treat it? Um, well, you want to encourage them to keep the area clean. You could give them a mouthwash. Anytime they're in pain, you can recommend aspirin or Tylenol to help them with their temperature. Um, and one more thing that I want to say is that if we were to scale that area so we would numb that area and then clean it out it does respond really well so we should um, numb the area first obviously because they're in a lot of pain and then uh, clean it second one or second infectious lesion we're going to look at is herpes infection this is cold sores where you have it like all over their mouth when when that happens it usually happens to young kids infants and children it's known as primary because it's happening to young people primary herpetic gingivitis dermatitis or primary herpes and this is like uh, fever blisters or cold sores very very painful so what can you do to treat that well it's over here but before i go into treatment let's just look at the two types of um, herpes simplex viruses herpes simplex virus one and this is what this is so when you see herpes simplex uh, virus and it's in the mouth or around the mouth it's known as herpes simplex virus 1. If we see herpes simplex virus in the genital area, then it's herpes simplex virus 2. Very contagious, right? It's transmitted sexually. Um, oral lesions is very contagious, so we don't want to, um, you know, share utensils like spoons, forks. We don't want to kiss because it's very contagious. It can spread. Um, so treatments we're going to look at in a bit, but this is really important. As hygienists or clinicians, we do not um, and I repeat, we do not see people who have cold sores, whether it be one big cold sore or many cold sores, we do not see them. They should only seek emergency dental care, but our care should be delayed. And the reason for that is because it's contagious. It can spread. If emergency dental care is um, needed, so hygiene, uh, for example, is not an emergency dental care. But let's just say if it was needed, then what people usually do is they apply a lot of lubricant like Vaseline in the area of closer and then they go ahead with treatment. 
So what can we use to treat um, these people who have these herpes simplex virus? Well, there's lots of antiviral agents or herpes simplex virus. So it's a viral infection. So we're going to find a drug that is antiviral that prevents this virus from spreading. So um, we're going to look at a, a cyclover. Uh, there's many other ones as well. So let's look at them. So a cyclover comes in tablets. It could come in cream. So this cream you would apply to the cold sore. You, need, you do need a prescription uh, for it. There is pencyclover. This, so this one actually over here, you need a prescription for it. But this medication over here, the Cosanol, it also known as Abriva, is available over the counter. So you don't need prescription. And this is very helpful for cold sores. And again, you can see that there are other drugs that are available to help with cold sore. And you'll notice that all of them end in clover. Um, so the way I remember it is C-L-O kind of has the same letters as cold for cold sore. So that's how I remember that when I see this, it's probably for a cold sore and then V-I-R for virus, right? So it's probably for a viral infection and probably for a cold sore viral infection. The next lesion we're going to look at is candidiasis, and I know you guys are familiar with this because it's also known as thrush when you see white patches inside the mouth. It's a fungal infection, and as you know, the best way to treat the, the fungal infection is by using uh, an antifungal drug like nystatin or ketoconazole. Right? There's many different types of medications that could be used to treat the uh, thrush or candidiasis infection. Angular cholitis, this is so angular for the angle of the mouth, if you think of it like that way. And cholitis is like, um, so inflammation right over here and the angle of the mouth. Um, it's red. It could be painful. It could not be painful. Typically, the reason why we get this redness is from drooling. So drooling can cause this. So what can we do? Well, some people say that you treat it, you might need an antifungal agent. Or you might need an antifungal plus a steroid or if it's really bad, antibiotic. And some people say that if you take vitamin B supplements, uh, you actually can prevent the um, angular cholitis. Um, the last infectious lesions we're going to look at is alveolar osteitis. And this is also known as dry socket. So this usually happens when you have an extraction. And, um, you know, whenever you have an extraction, they usually give you post-op instructions where they say, you know, don't suck with the straw. And the reason why they say that, don't suck with the straw, is because the blood clot that was initially here gets sucked out if you were to suck with the straw. And then you're left with something like a dry socket, which is extremely painful. Okay, so usually where does it happen? It happens in the lower molar region. So this is a premolar, but usually it would happen in a molar region, the lower, the mandibular molar region. That's where we see it most often. Um, and you may see, it, look, it may look infected, it may look swell, you know, swollen, uh, they might have fever, uh, the smell would be horrible when you smell it. So how do we treat it? We uh, flush it with water. We clean that area really well. We could pack it up with placement of a pack. Uh, and then we give them... Uh, pain medication to help relieve the pain because it's very painful. We typically do not give them antibiotic unless an infection is present, but usually it was not present. So there's usually no antibiotics prescribed. 